So welcome to this edition of Kemog Street Brown Radio. In this episode, uh, we're going to talk about the copy of the self. Um, there's this idea that we can make digital copies of consciousness and upload it onto computers and a uh, uh, method called whole brain emulation or mind uploading. And some people claim that these technologies would be central to that transhuman or post-human uh, era. And uh, we have actually discussed this particular topic uh, before in this Street Brain radio series. But uh, with the uh, rapid development of artificial uh, intelligence systems, large language models in particular, I think the urgency to discuss these things in depth is rapidly increasing. So here we are attacking the problem of whether a digital copy of the self is possible or not. Um, the interesting thing about large language models is, uh, as we have discussed, uh, it's based on the statistical ensemble of many outputs uh, put forth by uh, people on the web. And so in that sense, uh, these are uh, average behaviors of uh, human and, uh, agents. And uh, in that sense, it does not uh, exhibit any individuality. But when you come to think about that, uh, consciousness itself is more large, uh, generic. Uh, we may have individual differences, but the very fact that we can study consciousness uh, scientifically is that uh, each of our consciousness is not that unique. Uh, we, uh, of course, um, you know, forever enshrined in the privacy of each uh, self-consciousness. However, the nature of the conscious process itself is quite similar between people. So that the reason why we can actually discuss uh, consciousness from scientific point of view. And otherwise, we wouldn't be able to compare uh, one's state of consciousness with uh, the, that of other person. So that is the very foundation of the scientific study of consciousness. And, you know, there are really common features about our conscious experience. And probably that's why we can understand each other. Uh, otherwise, we would not be able to have a state of empathy for each other. So it will be argued that uh, there is a statistically generic uh, ensemble of properties of consciousness and for that matter it's no different from large language models so it would be quite interesting that uh, to consider whether large language models such as uh, chat gpt plus uh, gpt4 uh, bard and so on represent some generic model of uh, consciousness and some people actually argue that in the large language models there might be some internal models of the world and of the self, so that, for example, if you ask the computer about the state of mind of some agents, they would uh, come up with quite a convincing statement about um, false belief tasks and uh, uh, theory of mind tasks and uh, Winograd uh, schema. Uh, which actually requires some understanding of the sentence of, uh, that is presented in the local sense and that will require some um, degree of understanding or something that is similar to understanding. Uh, that is actually very uh, correlate, that, that would correlate with an uh, understanding of consciousness. So, um, you, know, you know, the larger model is uh, rapidly approaching a state where it will be possible to talk as if they are conscious and self-conscious and uh, conscious of other people's state of minds and so on. So, you know, it's not an absurd question anymore. But, you know, when you think about that, um, intuitively speaking, the ability to handle natural language does not necessarily correlate with uh, self-consciousness, as we recall as we developed uh, from infancy to adulthood, 
uh, our ability to com- communicate in language increased. But um, you know the the fact that uh, it uh, actually um, you know didn't happen until later in the in our life uh, that we could able to converse in naturalistic ways uh, coexists with the fact that we have been self-conscious more or less ever since our childhood and you know it's uh, you know it doesn't self-consciousness doesn't require uh, natural language per se so also it seems that uh, so you know even if the large language models exhibit really high uh, functioning abilities for natural language processing, it doesn't necessarily mean that they would be conscious. And indeed, if they are conscious, uh, there would be ethical problems arising from that. And But we do not treat the large language models as conscious. If we do, uh, we would be you know, raising ethical questions about you know, treating them as slaves, um, you know, chat GPT and so on, answering to prompts by millions of users every day and that would be tedious for conscious being but we do not raise that question so we are treating the large language models as more or less unconscious so we do not equate the state of um, you know, language proficiency with uh, the state of possessing uh, conscious mind but you know, having said that, um, it is indeed interesting uh, whether the kind of natural language ability that are developed in large language models would actually correlate, in some senses, um, with uh, ability to be self-aware and self-conscious, and whether these would represent um, some cognitive structure of, of the processes that uh, are happening in the brain when we are self-conscious and you know so the argument is that for example if the large language models successfully handles some arterial mind ta- type tasks it would mean that uh, without us knowing it explicitly uh, there might be some um, hidden uh, structures in the large language models um, and that, that are similar to the hidden structures in natural languages that we employ every day and, and these hidden structures which point to some really interesting aspects of self-consciousness so that without knowing it when we exchange our ideas through language uh, when we you know, share information through uh, everyday language, uh, there would be some really interesting uh, agenda uh, about uh, self-consciousness without us knowing it explicitly. And that's quite an interesting idea. So that uh, self-consciousness would arise as a you know, hidden uh, structure in the self-conscious state. And that is a really interesting, um, you know, aspect of natural language. Uh, so, uh, the relation of large language models to self-consciousness is arguably a quite difficult one. But it would appear that uh, the large language models, uh, such as ChatGPT, would have captured some essence of uh, what constitutes self-consciousness. However, um, the fact remains that uh, the, the uh, representations of human cognition can be copied quite easily, whereas uh, our consciousness, represented by the human brain, are uh, notoriously difficult to copy. Indeed, uh, as I speak in Tokyo, while walking on the street, uh, I would say that it's quite impossible to copy my consciousness in any significant way. Um, that would remain a really um, robust feature of this world. No matter how technology would advance, um, the whole premise 
behind mind uploading and whole brain emulation would be that、uh, you can decipher、uh, the coding in the human brain by measuring neural activities and so on. But、uh, it will be quite difficult to measure the brain state with a sufficient、uh, detail. So that、uh, the self-conscious state can be reproduced, and、uh, there's this question of deterministic cause, which、uh, de- depends very much on the initial conditions. So that、um, even a small deviation、uh, would lead to eventually quite large differences in the states. So that it's quite difficult to. Uh, imagine a situation where you would be able to measure the brain state to such a degree that、uh, you would be able to predict how it, it would evolve、um, after a sufficiently long time.、Uh, it also it almost seems impossible to do that. So this idea that you can measure brain activities and、um, predict. How the mind state would evolve after this would be quite difficult to、uh, envision, and so there's this、um, quite understandable reservation about the possibility of whole brain emulation and mind uploading at all.、Um, some people say would say that, including myself, that it is an illusion. I mean, you cannot really do that, and those people who are. You know, claiming that we can do that, are、uh, just saying some you know rubbish. I mean, it's a false promise, false promise. So many would say, and so it's actually quite difficult to to implement a. Ideas about、uh, copying one's self-consciousness, because the very idea of measuring a brain state appears to be really cumbersome. So the question of whether to、uh, copy, whether you can, why can, able, like, why is able to copy one's self-consciousness,、uh, boils down to the question of what actually constitutes. The identity、uh, condition for self-consciousness, and many people actually assume that、uh, it's content-based.、Uh, we have our own personal dispositions, and we have our own personal experiences. So we have our own life histories. So that you know, to be oneself means that we have the identical.、Uh, Personal traits and personal history, so that the similarity of、uh, these informational content would signify the similarity in self-consciousness. So that you know, when one has a similar personality trait and life histories, then you would have、uh, the similar. Uh, self-consciousness. So the informational content would、uh, determine the con-、uh, identity of self-consciousness. That is the usual assumption. However,、uh, if you were able to indeed copy one's、uh, state of mind at one time and make an exact copy of oneself. Standing in front of you, it will be difficult to certify that、um, the copied self would have the same conscious state as oneself.、Uh, indeed,、uh, as a kind of a getante experiment,、uh, suppose that you have an exact copy of yourself at one time. Would you feel that the copied self would be the same you? I don't think so. Well, it doesn't actually matter. I mean, it's not essential that、uh, information states are the same or similar. 
because there's no way to certain ascertain that um, you know um, appearances can be deceiving and uh, you might actually have an exact copy of your facial expressions and that might have an, that might you know induce an illusion that the other self is more or less you because it has the fa same facial uh, expression thank you but um, you know, it doesn't really guarantee that uh, you would actually be hard pressed to verify that it's not a falsifiable process uh, you when you are facing with somebody else it's you know okay so suppose that somebody has a totally different appearances from you uh, it might that person might have different gender age uh, you know, personal expressions but you know the experience itself might be quite similar i mean after all that's the whole idea of a soulmate is based on i mean you know when you encounter somebody who you feel that to be uh, quite similar to you you say that person is a soulmate and the soulmate might be actually quite different from you in appearance but similar to you in uh, mind set and you know that can happen to you whether the other person is similar to you in appearances or not so external appearance is actually does not do doesn't have anything to do with uh, mind state similarities of course in okay usual circumstances um, you know, similar appearances would signify similar mindsets but that is not a matter of principle I mean it could be you know it, it's quite possible that a uh, similar mindset can be hidden behind uh, different appearances and that is actually something that you need to consider when you uh, uh, consider the identity of the self-consciousness from first principles so you know because we are living in the world where you know copying of oneself doesn't happen so often we don't think of these things usually but when we go back to the basics we do need to consider these things otherwise we won't be answering these things uh, from first principles uh, so you know the fact that one is oneself uh, as one goes through one's life history seems to depend on the fact that one uh, you know content information content of but the mind state remains the same or gradually grows changes but when you really think about it it's quite possible that uh, you know if uh, technologies develop in the future uh, one's mental state can be changed uh, abruptly by modifications of the genetics and synaptic makeup of the brain um, in one way or another so that when one wakes up from the sleep or from the operation one is in a totally different state of mind and it's quite possible um, well, it, it happens also in real life that uh, from time to time we feel that we have changed quite a lot. Uh, if you look back on your elementary school days, for example, uh, you would hear that you are a totally different person. You do have the memory of being in the elementary school days and there's this pesky and quite intriguing question about uh, the pure memory by Arnie Bergson but um, the thing is you actually 
do not have any uh, guarantee that uh, the continuation of the information content of uh, the mind state would guarantee the identity of the self consciousness. It's quite separate. Um, you know, given a set of mind at any given time, uh, in terms of the stream of consciousness, you would be you. And uh, as time progresses, you would continue to be you. But that doesn't actually de uh, depend on the explicit identity of the mental state. Uh, 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 in fact, um, as I talk, most of my past uh, life histories are hidden in you know, the unconscious. Uh, I do not recall them explicitly. And um, it's for instance, you know, if you know, there are all these interesting reports about false memories so that uh, you can have an illusory recollection of the past. And uh, there's no guarantee that uh, your recall of the past would be consistent across time. Uh, all, all these memories, uh, the majority of them, would be hidden in the unconscious. And uh, as you recall them from time to time in your conscious uh, stream, a uh, stream of consciousness, it, there's no guarantee that they would be consistent. So that, you know, the fact that we have a continuous self consciousness wouldn't uh, be equated with the identity or gradual change of the information contents of your mind state. It's quite different. It, it's something that goes beyond that. Uh, it's like a cup, and within that cup, there could be many liquids filled, uh, there could be many contents, but the cup remains the same. And the cup, the identity of the cup, does not depend on the identity of the information state. Um, it's there from the beginning, before any uh, mind state is filled in. And uh, the fact that you continue to be yourself doesn't actually um, depend on the fact that you have the more or less same um, mind state. Um, you could actually have a totally different mind state, but uh, you could be the same you, provided, provided that your cup is the same. The liquid that is filled in the cup uh, could be different, but the cup will be the same. And that is a guarantee of your self-consciousness and its continuity, continuous identity. That's, you know, nothing else than that essential uh, of uh, which would uh, guarantee the identity of yourself. So uh, it's totally counterintuitive compared to our perception of uh, our self-consciousness in daily lives. It's something totally different. Uh, we need to realize that. So the problem of the identity of the self is quite interesting because usually uh, identity would be established through uh, the identity or similarity of uh, contents. Uh, for example, in elementary particles, if a um, particle has exactly the same mass, charge, uh, then, uh, and spin, uh, then it will be an identical, identical uh, particle. Of course, there are more than one electron, more than one positron, and neutron, and so on. But, um, you know, there's this really interesting theory by Wheeler, Feynman's mentor, that there's only one electron, one positron, and one neutron in the universe. And that's quite another story, so we won't uh, touch it uh, at this time. Uh, but um, usually, um, the idea, basic idea is that the same or similar information contents, the same or similar identity. Um, because, you know, we can change, uh, we learn, 
we grow, we develop. Uh, so the information content uh, describing oneself might change gradually, but that gradual change would be supported by a stable consciousness. So the identity of the self would be maintained. And, you know, so that uh, would lead to this very general assumption that identity or similarities in uh, information contents would usually uh, signify uh, identity of the self. But when it comes to self-consciousness, it's not necessarily so. Uh, again, if we come back to this uh, problem of a copy of me, uh, if I have a copy of me, identical copy of me, in some uh, space distant from me, and then I wouldn't be able to tell that uh, if uh, in the re relativistic space-time uh, it's outside the light cone, so that it's spatially uh, separated, then there's no way that I can interact with the copied me. So that existence of the copied me wouldn't have any um, effect on me at all. I mean, in terms of self-consciousness. So I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. If there's a curtain in my room and behind the curtain there's an exact copy of me, I don't know. I wouldn't be affected at all by the existence of copied me. So in the sense, uh, if there's a copy, digital copy of me, it doesn't make any difference. So this idea that in uh, very naive uh, models of uh, mind uploading and home brain emulation, some people say that uh, you know, if we make a digital copy, then there will be uh, eternal existence of the self consciousness. Um, you know, this is a really ridiculous idea. I mean, that can't happen. Um, even if uh, it's possible to make a digital copy, um, it doesn't make any difference. If there was a digital copy of me somewhere uh, in the universe, I wouldn't know. If the digital copy was right in my room, I would know that. I would notice that. And there's no way to verify that unless you uh, assume a kind of a omnipotent God's eye and um, the God's eye can uh, you know, verify that I am equivalent to the digital copy uh, point to point, state to state. I, you know, if, if in that case, uh, I, I can't, you know, be affected by that um, because it's actually irrelevant whether there's a digital copy of me or not. So in that sense, um, this whole idea of approaching the identity of self through information identity or similarity uh, appears to be really, really uh, misguided. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, you know, whether you are identical in informational state to some other um, entity in the universe. Uh, actually, the, the you that is you is it depends on is established on something quite different, and that is most essential question about the identity of myself. So, um, in considering the significance of a copy of uh, the self, um, it is quite interesting to realize that um, you you would need metacognition to realize that you are you. Self consciousness is about uh, metacognition. And even if you have a copy of yourself, you can't actually um, form a metacognition of the copied self. Uh, suppose that you have a complete uh, copy of yourself in a distant region of the universe, and um, you are trying to form a metacognition of that, uh, you, it's impossible. You need to be connected to that that system in order to have a metacognition. 
So simply put, uh, if you divide the brain's cortical system into uh, prefrontal regions, which are metacognitive, and uh, other regions which encode uh, the contents, if you like, of uh, personalities, then it would appear that um, w the fact that you can't actually form a metacognition of um, information uh, stored in remote in a remote region of the universe would mean that it is quite a separate entity altogether. So if you just realize that uh, metacognition is quite necessary for self-consciousness, it would appear that uh, this uh, idea of copying the information and content of uh, self-consciousness is quite uh, stupid because you know you can't actually copy the metacognitive relations themselves. Uh, you, you know you can copy. Probably you may be able to copy the contents of uh, the memories of life and uh, emotional states and personal traits even. But unless these things are, you know, um, unless these things are copied, uh, unless these things are become subject of uh, the metacognitive process of one's uh, seat of subjectivity, they don't count as the contents of a phenomenal self. So from that perspective, um, it is not possible. It is not possible to copy consciousness because the relation belongs to this particular instance of self-consciousness alone. And you can't, uh, you can't uh, just uh, pretend that uh, just copying the whole thing would uh, extend the applicability of the metacognition to distant uh, regions. And it's simple as that. So, um, because metacognition uh, is very much related to embodiment, um, it means that at the core of the problem of self consciousness, there is embodiment. Um, you would normally think that embodiment is something ex ex uh, exterior to the problem of self consciousness per se. Um, embodiment is something that you would uh, need to discuss when you are talking about um, robotics or bodily movements. But actually, from the point of view of metacognition, it is something that you really need to reckon with when you discuss um, the very foundations of consciousness, and in particular, self-consciousness, because self-consciousness involves uh, metacognition, necessarily, and um, metacognition, in turn, is very much related to embodiment. Uh, so it might actually, you know, when you think about that, because um, self-consciousness uh, also is related to uh, the fact that um, we have body awareness, uh, we have the brain gut uh, axis, and so that we uh, are aware of the internal movements of the intestine and so on. Uh, if we include that uh, as a part of uh, self-consciousness, then we need to have necessarily have uh, bodies, not only the brain but also body. And in turn, because the body is connected to the environment, and uh, there's no way to um, cut the chain of interactions um, with the environment um, as a border between the self and the external world by some uh, first principles uh, for we need to go all the way to the external world. So from that perspective, through uh, metacognition, it might be said that uh, self-consciousness is actually tightly coupled with uh, the body and the environment and, uh, so that it is not possible to talk about 
um, talk about um, um, disembodied self-consciousness or indeed about a copy self-consciousness um, you know as independent from the uh, body and the environment so all is a continuum so you know uh, some arguments based on post humanism and transhumanism would suggest that we can actually easily disengage self-consciousness from uh, all these uh, causal connections but that might not actually be the case um, you, you will probably need to go all the way to uh, the external world and its uh, reflections on our body in order to give a full account for self-consciousness that would put the arguments about uh, digital copies of the self uh, quite on an uh, unstable basis um, we actually cannot um, make digital copies of ourselves because that would mean that making uh, in, in addition to that we would in addition to making digital copies of the brain we would be able, we will have to make digital copies of the mind uh, no, the, the body um, digital copies of the environment and so on and so on and so on so that there would be no way to cut off uh, at some point this uh, chain of interactions which needs to be copied in order to claim that uh, we have indeed copied self-consciousness uh, so you may say that self-consciousness is actually the metacognitive mechanism itself without uh, referring to um, the specific information contents that constitute self so you are the metacognitive machinery that is in your brain and uh, no matter what your personal traits might be and your uh, life history might be uh, that doesn't actually have to do with your self-consciousness per se so you might have your facial image and uh, your uh, personal history, memories, and your name, and so on, as a normal constitution of uh, self-consciousness. But those wouldn't actually be the core of the matter. So um, whoever you are, where you, wherever you might come from, uh, which gender, of the spectrum you might be you actually the metacognition itself and um, that is not transferable um, you are the kind of transparent generic uh, metacognitive perception itself and from there you would uh, actually um, be derived as yourself and um, you know through that derivation, derivation process you might actually be uh, you know related to other people through mutual references uh, by name uh, by your embodiment by facial image and so on so you might be referred to by that but within you you are just the metacognitive uh, self-referential group and that is the gist of the matter uh, you are in the sense you are transferable you are generic you are uh, quite the same as anybody else that's why we can compare our self-conscious states with each other so when we say we are different selves uh, we usually refer to the uh, differential information of uh, face, personality traits, life histories, and so on. But that's not actually the essential uh, property of yourself. The essential property is that you are formed in your local uh, you know, place as a self-referential metacognitive process. And there's nothing more to that. 
um, you know, no matter what information content you might actually be correlated with, uh, that is not you. I mean, you're not your name, you're not your face, you're not your life history, you are not your personal DT traits, you are something else, you are the generic self referential loop. So, that, therein, I think, lies the greatest uh, misunderstanding about uh, the origin of the self, the origin of self consciousness. And there is this uh, series of misunderstanding about this idea of copying oneself, making a digital copy of oneself, because they usually refer to the informational contents rather than the generic self referential loop. That is the misconception. So, um, I think the idea that you can copy your self consciousness is based on a misunderstanding. Uh, of course, you can copy information. That is what we do with computers and artificial intelligence systems and so on. And so we're so used to that idea that we do not actually think about the foundations of self consciousness or indeed information seriously. When it comes to information, actually, there's something similar to uh, the impossibility of copying self-consciousness. Because after all, uh, information in uh, consciousness depends on metacognition. And uh, for example, this, this is a really trivial statement, but uh, goes unnoticed most of the time. Uh, so when somebody claims that he or she as uh, simulating us as the environment, uh, you know, it's usually assumed that the information there would code for the temperature, wind, uh, moisture, and so on, uh, carbon dioxide, and so on, uh, in the Earth's atmosphere. But there's no guarantee that these informations, indeed, uh, that bits of data would indeed code for the aforementioned physical entities. Uh, there's no guarantee, systemic guarantee. When we consider them in terms of consciousness, uh, there are ways that you can guarantee that. Max principle perception uh, proposed by me uh, would provide that kind of uh, mechanism, but that doesn't have, have some, anything to do with statistics. Uh, statistics have nothing to do with the foundation of information, which many people actually fail to see and appreciate. So, um, I think the current state of affairs here is uh, not only do people misunderstand the foundations of copying self-consciousness, but also they misunderstand the foundations for information representation in general. So I have been arguing that um, the idea that uh, copying uh, self-consciousness can be done and would be done is too naive and it's based on a really simplistic uh, misunderstanding of how uh, self-consciousness arises in the brain. But having said that, um, I, I think I, we have come to this very important point that actually the copying of information from one state to another uh, is actually a really difficult task and interactive task when you consider uh, the metacognition. Uh, so, you know, in that respect, I think copying or playing you know, information is actually as hard as copying of self-consciousness which depends on metacognition again. Here we are discussing uh, conscious information and conscious information by definition depends on metacognition so it is not possible to copy them per se. And I think this is a really great insight uh, in the era of artificial intelligence. Uh, the ideas about artificial intelligence is based on the fact that, uh, based on the assumption, assumed fact that uh, information, digital information, is very easy to copy and transfer. That is the whole basis of artificial intelligence research, or indeed any information technology related research. But these assumptions do not stand. Uh, in brain's unconscious uh, processing, uh, there might be some 
uh, arguably, you know, interesting to point about uh, the information represented in uh, the unconscious state of the uh, neurons would be somehow uh, copyable and transferable. That is, but that also, I think, is open for interpretation of the interpretations and, um, you know, discussions and disruptions. So, you know, the statement of the is um, when you realize that it is not that easy to uh, copy self-consciousness, it will shed light on the general difficulty of copying information in general. So anyway, uh, I think uh, this session has actually has been extended over a period of three days, I think. So I think it will be nice to sum up and move to new pastures. Not greener, maybe, but new pastures still. So anyway, um, it is difficult to copy self-consciousness because it depends on metacognition. And metacognitive states cannot be just copied away because uh, it is private in the sense that it depends on the mutual uh, interactions and relationships between elements at the here and now. So self-consciousness wouldn't be able to uh, be copied. And actually, the same can be said about uh, any information. And we, earlier in this debate, we have been discussing uh, things on the assumption that self-consciousness per se and information in general can be separated. But when it comes to consciously perceived information, that separation does not hold anymore. So self-consciousness and informational state in general are very hard to copy when it uh, is when they are processed consciously. So indeed, so the difficulty to copy might be the hallmark of consciousness. So with that thought, I close this episode of Kemogi's Street Brain Radio. A poor man's answer to Lex Friedman podcast. So see you along. Thank you for listening.